guys, this podcast is brought to you by our friends over at Wrestling Collector Shop. The next time you're looking to add the newest wrestling figures to your lineup, you've got to go to WrestlingCollectorShop.com. Started by collectors for collectors around the globe, Wrestling Collector Shop has been serving fans the latest and greatest in wrestling action figures since 2002. Whether you're looking for basics, elites, or ultimates, Wrestling Collector Shop should be your first stop the next time you're looking for wrestling figures. So make sure to go to WrestlingCollectorShop.com and use code SWOGGLE to save yourself 10% on your order. Again, that's 10% off with code SWOGGLE only at Wrestling Collector Shop. Hey guys, once again, another episode of Going Postal. I'm Dylan, that's George. This week, 3MB, part 3, we get to the good, the bad, and the ugly of everything with my 3MB run. As I said, I'm Dylan, my riding partner, that's George. George, say hi. Hi guys, as always. Guys, that's enough of George. Uh, Here we go, 3MB, part 3. I'm Dylan, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Swoggle, YouTube.com slash Dylan Postle, uh, at Postle Pot, nope, I'll let George do it. Go ahead, George. You were George. so close. You were so close. <laughs> it's, almost, it's almost like there's notes prepared for this. So let me tell you something. You use the notes for State of Affairs? Nope. You don't? George, I don't You've do got notes. that one so... That is the podcast that you have been doing for less time, but your intro and outro for that is much better, and you don't even need to recite it, because we've been doing this one for almost two years longer. Here's the reason. And you don't remember your own plugs. Stupid Ass Shoes has this like serious character about him, that he, this facade that he puts on, and I don't understand. I don't understand the facade. I don't. He puts the sunglasses on, and this he does it. Welcome to State of Affair. I I get so like in my like chest irritated about it that I go, oh, I have to I have to at least knock these reads out and these these intro out. Us, it's just a chat between pals, and and so I just kind of I wing it of sorts. It's fine. Uh, the plugs We've only for been this doing show this for two years. It's fine. The plugs for this show at Going Postal Pod on all forms of social media. That's it. At Dylan Postel on all forms of social media. YouTube.com slash Dylan Postel. Twitch.tv slash Dylan Postel. Who knows when he's going to start going live on there again. But hey, if he does, you want to be it's happening. Uh, alerted it's happening. to it. So make sure to uh, follow that channel. It's free. Make sure to ring uh, that bell so you know Smash. when he goes live. And then uh, for the YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe. That's also free. And smash that notification bell so that you know every time a video diary, a new episode of State of Affairs, a new episode of this podcast goes up. SwaggleAuction.com. Get yourself a free $10 credit on whatnot. We got to talk about that. Patreon. Patreon. Patreon is here. The Pod Exchange family is on Patreon. You've all wanted ad-free listening. Patreon is a way to get that and extra episodes, bonus content, and so much more. It's an awesome, awesome way to support the Pod Exchange family. So go to patreon.com slash pod exchange. That is pod exchange without that middle E, pod exchange on Patreon. Guys, I want to get into something. <laughs> if you're new to the channel, which with since the uh, the old Chris Van Vliet interview, We've had a lot of new subs and a lot of new followers. What a it's, fantastic uh, interview. You absolutely ah, killed it. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <It> was, uh, <laughs> I got the plugs in right off the bat. Literally, oh, it was great. first thing off the bat was the plugs for the channel, plugs for the podcast. Uh, it was like I'm getting so much good feedback. If you guys haven't listened yet or watched yet, um, I, I don't know how you're a part of this and not following Chris Van Vliet because his interviews are incredible. But uh, he's he's coming to small talk soon. We're gonna get him on for a real good Ooh. small talk. I don't know, man. You know me. Uh, getting to the heart of the matter, we do it on the podcast here and there. But 
when regular interviews, I don't do it a lot. I don't, I don't get to the heart of the matter. So when I, I don't know, the feedback has been so good and so positive. It's been a, it's been a really, really good back end of doing that interview. He sent, he sent me the clip of the book thing, the and he goes, you're giving my editor so much work, and I absolutely love it. And I saw the, the, the book one, and then the Google, when I'm plugging the pod, and it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, whatever, uh, Google, and then he goes, like, Google's going away, and I just, I swiped that one back. Oh, man, it killed me. It was, it was such a fun, and you know me, I don't watch my interviews at all. So that's another funny thing in the interview. I take my because you can hear it buzz. And there was a comment on the on the video. of I thought someone's car was backing up <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't. So what you just heard now, I don't know, maybe the noise gate will cut it out. But it's it's like a high pitch like whistle. Like it sounds yeah. like it's like mic feedback. But in the Chris Van Vliet interview, it almost is like a like a jingle is playing. Like it's like it's almost like you're turning it on or turning off or it's telling you that it's got like low battery and it's just like that's not the sound that i the normal, i get yeah, the feedback reverb. like high pitch like <laughs> like uh supersonic echolocation sound <laughs> it's just a fun interview man it really really was it was we did that during squared circle expo and i was on such a high from squared circle expo you know just having landed in there and just hanging out with my buddies all weekend it really really was there was a nice end to it end of the weekend just man can't say enough good things about the guy the guy him and, and i talk about it in that interview him and sam roberts both really uh they're two guys that i heavily support because they're two you know diy kind of self-made self-made men we appreciate self-made podcast interview hosts uh on this show and let me tell you if you haven't already and you're listening to this podcast finish this episode first because yeah this it's important because we cover things in this interview that they talk about in the Chris Van Vliet, the insight interview uh, with Swaggle. So finish this, go listen to that, and then listen to like every other interview that he's done because CBB is just like a pro's pro when it comes that to that. Cena one, man, is, is just incredible. Pro's pro. Yeah. Here's what we're going to do we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we are going to be diving into the final part of all things 3MB. Are you a fan of Disney, Pixar, Jurassic Park, The Office, or even WWE? Or maybe you just want a sleek and comfortable pattern shirt? Then you need to check out Roosevelt's.com. R-S-V-L-T-S dot com today. Roosevelt's makes the most eye-catching and comfortable shirts going today. Whether it's button-ups, or polos, or hoodies, or even hats, and everything in between, Roosevelt's truly has something for everyone. Made for those with the love of sports, pop culture, and so much more, and above all else, having a kick-ass time. This clothing is for the bold and fun, for those who dare mighty things. Roosevelt's.com, check them out. Hell of a break right there. Hell of a break. Now, we get to the heart of the matter, George. All right. Payback. It's like, a, it's like I'm a professional podcast co-host. You know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> what did we call you? Two Pods Postal? Two Pods. <laughs> Are you Two Pods Postal or Postal Two Pods? Two Pods Postal. All right. Man, I got they call a me, growing man. list of shirts that I have to make for you, and there's not enough time in the day to make you all these <laughs> shirts that we keep coming up with. No, it's going to be like, I'm going to be Matt. <laughs> for a friend of the pod, Liam Davis, came up with a great idea for two pods postal yet. shirt. I don't know no, yet. Good. It is, it is a 10 know. of 10. I just got to figure out how the hell I'm going to get it to work. But, man, thank you for that idea, Liam. Very good. Uh, all right. WWE Payback is what we're kicking off with. It is the... Hair versus mask match it takes place at the Allstate Arena in Rosemont, Illinois. You guys go seven minutes and 10 seconds. The official card is El Torito with Diego and Fernando going up against Hornswoggle with Drew McIntyre, Heath Slater, and Jinder Mahal. Now, I have notes that you gave me that you wanted to talk about. So I've sprinkled them throughout the episode. These are the things that you wanted me to call back to. So first, we're going to start with, talk to me about cutting off El Torito's tail. 
they told me in the lead up that I was going to cut off his tail. And I was like, what? That's essentially like, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, if he's supposed to be a bull, let's be honest. They always told him he's supposed to be a bull. Like he's just a bull. He's not a person. So now I'm cutting off a bull's tail. Secondly, <laughs> with this, there was obviously no blood. And then after it, like the week after it, he just wore a bandage with a little X on his butthole. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell is going on? But also, I don't remember him like withering in pain because I cut off his tail <laughs> like a bull would. It was just like I cut his tail off and that was it. And I used big, I think I used like huge gardening shears. So it was just a mess. The whole thing I was thinking like, oh man, those are, those are some, some Brutus Barber beefcake. That's literally what it was. Yeah. And also, I was chasing him with him at some point. Like I was going to stab him with him. It was so weird. But it was one of those things where, man, I was happy. It got me on TV. I was just, I was very happy about that. Um, so here we, here we are and, and we all see is done, the, you know, and, and how do we keep going? And I immediately pitched hair versus mask and they were like, oh, you want to cut your hair? I was like, I mean, I will, if it gets us another pay-per-view. Great. Yeah, let's do it. Um, and then we did a thing in that, in that match. I remember oh, going to the match, it's, you know, going forward here. I always wanted to do the Rey Mysterio mask spot where you take the one off and there's another one under it. And that was always like my vision of doing that with him at some point. And so getting to that was a, was a really, really cool nod. I, oh man, that, I mean, that's literally the end of the match. So we'll get to that, but who that is your, the way that you play that off, the way that commentary plays that off. Yeah. It's it like commentary is plays a huge part for this match and they make a lot of references to things then that now I understand more having, you know, with you and I being friends, I'm like, Oh, these are a lot of references that I get now that I did not get in 2014. There's a lot of, I mean, it was, it was definitely, you know, Cole and JBL making some fun out of everything going on. Uh, and definitely not taking it as seriously as I would have probably wanted, but I feel like if they would have taken it, seriously it almost would have been laughed at you know in the opposite way um but it was tough man like thinking how do we get from there to there and and people still care about it and want to see it um yeah that it was and then again going to the match i remember thinking how the hell are we gonna top wlc like we kind of for lack of a better term like blew our load in the wlc thing how do we I can't say that on here. No, I'm, I'm, I'm like, that was a reaction to the, the statement that you made, oh. not what you said. <laughs> ah. Remember, that's not, the line. not shoes that <laughs> don't need to, there's no hostility here. <laughs> I turned the microphone on. And I get <laughs> uh, but it's, there's it's no just... captain's hat or aviator <laughs> sunglasses here. <laughs> it's uh it really, really was a thought of how are we going to, how are we going to do this? How are we going to, again, make people care, make people want to see more of this without getting like the, ugh, this is happening still reaction. Well, let's start with the Bulls uniform. Yeah. So it was in Chicago and they were like, we're going to come out in Chicago Bulls colors. And Torito is going to have like a little jersey, like a little mock jersey for the Bulls. Obviously, they couldn't put the logo or the name on it or anything like that, I think. But it was like, I remember hearing during the match or some, or like they came out first. I forget how I heard about it after it was something. And Vince was pissed that he wore the uh, jersey. God damn it. He's a bull. Why is he wearing a shirt? Why? What's that shirt he's wearing? Because again, uh, I don't know if he knows what the Chicago Bulls are. Um, I I truly don't, and that's okay. But I was like, I hope someone just said, "Well, he's a bull," and that's the famous sports team that plays here. So it's kind of a fun nod. I think it still would have been. But he doesn't wear clothes. 
like that kind of thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> cause again, I cut his tail off as if he was a real bull. <laughs> and I'm trying to think of all the other like animal characters that they've done throughout the years. Probably like never wear clothes. Gobbledygooker didn't wear Gobbledy a shirt. Gobbledygooker, Mantar. Mantar didn't wear a shirt. This is the match where I, I think I've watched this back once. Because I, I just talk about and think about WLC way more. I only remember like one thing from it, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Oh, I've besides, got the whole thing laid out. Besides the haircut, I only remember the dive, doing my dive to the outside. And the reason I remember that, I was like, hey, guys, I want to do a dive. I didn't do the dive in the last one. I want to do a dive in this one. And Fitz like, okay, just like a dive off the apron. I go, no. I want to flip through the ropes. He goes, <laughs> no chance. I go, here we go. Get the crash pad. And the f- thing was, I was like, man, I don't know if I can do this. I've never, I've never done it before in my life. I've never even thought about doing the flip dive. But I was like, I'm going to try it. And I did it in rehearsals onto the crash pad. Fit was standing right by the crash pad because he wanted to make sure I cleared the apron that I wouldn't hit my head on the apron. I did it perfectly. He goes, do that again. True, dude. Try to do it again. Try to do it again. I do it. Do it again. And he goes, ha, yep, let's do it. Yep, we're okay. And I was like, fuck, this is going to be the coolest moment of the match for me. Uh, and I get to get my shit in. I literally remember nothing else besides that. I don't even remember the finish. I remember the mask part in the finish. I don't remember. Did he hit me with the moonsault? Did he hit me with the the sit on the chest? None of that. I remember f- the dive and I remember the haircut. That's all I remember. Oh, I think my my dad was there. Wait, I don't remember at all. I cannot think. And this really bums me out now because I cannot remember for the life of me if he was there. Oh, oh, well. Well, you know what? my memory it's a question for, me. for him. Yeah. When we have him on, we can ask him. But what okay, so the, match, George? the first spot that I have made note of was the uh, corner to corner Irish whip reversals. Where it's you go to Irish whip, he spins, he reverses it, you spin, you reverse it, and you go the entire diagonal length that? from from like the top left to the bottom right turnbuckle. I all have no the way corner to corner of that. It's it was great. I I I laughed harder at that than anything else in the match, just because like you guys look like you're having fun doing it, and you're like very aware of how. Well, maybe not Torito because he's wearing a mask, but like you can see you're yeah. like, and then I spin, and then you spin, and then I spin, and then you spin. I, I remember I got I got gear, new gear for the match. I came out with the silver pants. I really loved those pants, man. I loved those pants, and uh. I was such a huge MGK guy and still am to this day. I had 19 XX on the pocket. I came out with an MGK bandana. Uh, and I was like, man, I was going to rep him because I really, really liked him at the time. And uh, it was, it was kind of a nod, but I loved those pants. I loved those pants and new shoes. I remember uh, I had like sick Chuck Taylors, like studded Chuck Taylors. I remember now. Okay. Here's my question because I've never thought of this. That's you're just wearing like a hot topic studded belt. Yeah. When you're wrestling, I hated it, it. I would say because right now when you wrestle and no, you have, I will you never have wear a belt, belt again. I hate it. I would say I, I didn't know if you if it's like better to have certain belts like of certain material and if like these like real leather. No, like, I wore studded it only because of that character, and I hated it so much because it was like big and heavy, and like you if you bend the wrong way, it would like cut. It would. I would feel it on my on my my muffin top, and I just I did not like it whatsoever. I was uh, let's off talk that about the airplane spin. Do you remember that? Nope. All right, so to me. Torito Torito puts you on his shoulders, and he spins around, and he spins around, and he spins around, and he just keeps spinning, and then he puts you down, and you guys stumble around the ring. Yep. JBL says he's used to being like that on the weekends. Even better, hell yes. And then Cole says. I know he is, but there's no luggage card out here. Which Even, does he really? One hundred percent blew my mind. I was just oh like, my god! Shit, I didn't realize that. Oh, I, 
But Man. then you guys stumble around the ring. Yeah. And then you bump heads. Both of you fall down. Yeah. And then you get up, gain like regain your composure a little bit, and then completely miss a splash by like four feet. No recollection of this. I remember nothing of this match. This is bumming me out now because I, I and I'm not going to watch it. Oh, you have to. It's it's not Patreon. As... Watch along. That'll be a Patreon. That's, that's a good that's one. The pa- that's the first Patreon. Guys, sign up for the Patreon. That's going to be the first watch along we do is this match because, man, I'll watch it. That'll with be June. Too. You know June, what? June watch along. June watch along. We're going to do this. I'll, I'll have Landon watch it with me, too. Uh, man, I definitely have never watched this match. Now that you say this, I've never watched this match in my life. Oh, it's 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 fun. Uh, then after that, the next thing I have uh, written down is Charles Robinson catching Torito after the kickout attempts. I remember this. And it happens. He catches him. He throws, uh, throws him back spot, on the, you. That, the old school midget spot. Yep. And, and then, then he I goes to do the same him, right? for you. Yep. And then he doesn't catch you. Yep. you just- so I remember this. And I remember thinking this is exactly what I didn't want to do when I started training. Like I hated it so much. But then again, we, we talked about it last episode. Two episodes ago. Where uh, we still had to appease Vince. And his midget spot wanting. Um, and this is like the most classic one ever for midget wrestling. And I was like, all right, let's do it. I hated it so much. But I knew we had to do stuff like that to appease him. And we couldn't just wrestle, which is fine. Like, thinking about it back on it now, I'm fine with it. I don't care. It got us on pay-per-view. I'm happy. And you got a great clip of you yelling at Charles Robinson now. Which is- I have no, like, I, I remember it happening and talking about it. I need to watch this. I really, really do. Like, I'm almost excited to watch it now. Torito crawls under the ring. Heath chases him. And then Heath comes out, jumps on the commentary desk, terrified. And then Torito comes out like two seconds later. And now he has the shears. And then he chases Heath around the outside, runs back into the ring. And then the match goes back to you versus Torito. But there's just a spot where Torito and Heath are running outside the ring. Just himself? <laughs> It's a, yeah, it's just like Torito is chasing Heath with the shears on the outside of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> nope, no recollection of that one. Uh, do you remember hitting the BME? Yeah. So that was another thing where I was like, hey, fit, I can do a moonsault. He goes, no, you can't. I go, I can do a moonsault. So I remember I, would, I was practicing it at our camp and I was, I've never hit one. I've only missed them. And he goes, no, you can't. I go, watch. And I did it. And he goes, oh, okay. Yep. Funny story. Uh, Years later, obviously, for ACW, I had a match. It was an anniversary show. It was my first match back for ACW after getting released from WWE. It was me versus a local guy, Devin. And uh, Dreamer was a guest on that show. So he was watching my match and I end up doing this moonsault and missing it. And he goes, you've worked for me, House of Hardcore. He goes, you've worked for House of Hardcore now a ton of times. You've never once busted out a moonsault at House of Hardcore. I go, well, got to pop the hometown crowd, you know? He goes, and it was actually like a decent missed moonsault. George, there is 0.0% chance I could do that currently oh. with the lack of feeling. and. Just my body. There is no way. I think about that often. I was like, man, I wonder if I can pull that off even anymore. More. There is, n- and then I literally just walk up to the corner and go, "I'm good. Nope, I'm good." But I remember that. I remember like doing it. And again, it was like the dive, where it was almost almost the Tommy Dreamer reaction from Fit of being like, "Where has this been? Like, where, where did this come from?" So if Christopher Daniels has the best moonsault ever, yeah, and. Tiffany Stratton has the prettiest, prettiest moonsault ever. What is Swoggle's version of that moonsault? Most decent looking moonsault ever. <laughs> it's got to be. It's got to be three three <laughs> letters. Shortest is it, moonsault ever. Okay, I like yeah. that. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. It's just one of those things where I was list of happy. shirts grows again. Yeah, I was happy to do it and. Uh, 
I talk about it a lot in, in this stuff with, you know, with, throughout the whole Torito story of, I was just happy to be able to show I can do things because I never got to. I was going to say this, there's a lot more, like you hit big moves in WLC, but there's, it almost feels like there's a lot more involvement of everyone else. Like the things that you and Torito do in WLC are like big moments. Like yeah. This has these big moments, but it also feels more like a wrestling match. It's such a reverse of what the matches should have been. And I think that's why we definitely needed to do the mask versus hair to make it at least something. Um, I'll talk about it after about there was an, I, I kept pitching to go forward from that, but nothing came of it. Oh, all right. Well, the big spot or the, the, the big multi person spot here, gender Heath, Diego and Fernando all flip and jump and fall off of the apron in one way or another. And then everyone's on the outside. You hype up the crowd. Like you're going to do a dive through the rope. And you chicken out at the last second and drew flips over you and takes everybody out. Then everybody regains their composure. Everyone's kind of back up camera pans back to you. You're in the rig. You do your hype up again. And now you hit that diving cannonball through the bottom rope. No, right. No remembrance of the Drew dive. Do you remember what happens after your dive? I'm assuming Torito dives. Yes. Onto just here, onto the pile. Heath goes on to the apron. Acts like he's going to jump. Torito from inside the ring gets up on the top rope and does a spinning Hurricane Rana. And just throw all everyone goes throws him onto Heath or throws Heath onto the group, right? Yep, onto everyone. Everyone's taken out. Okay. How do we get to the mask then? So then Torito goes back inside the ring. Okay. Goes to hit something off of the top rope. You intercept him and hit a liger bomb. <laughs> I, I remember wanting to do that because I did the other, I did the one in the WLC match. I was like, I want to do a running power bomb this time. It it was good. Yeah, it was like fun. and commentary that. puts it over. Like, <laughs> it, was, like good. it was a good looking power bomb. Mask spot from there. So now you go to grab the mask. You pull it off. You hold it up. Vince was not happy about this. I remember Vince was not happy about this either because again he's a bull. Why should we pull, be pulling his? Why should we think that it's a mask? And I was like. But what if we sell it like it is a mask? And that's his face underneath. And <laughs> so we just did it. We ended up just doing it. But I remember him going, God damn it. It's not a mask. He's a bull. He's got a tail. <laughs> uh, does he hit me with the moonsault or the, the sit on the chest? So he, with ease. To the top rope. Like, to the top rope. Like, I was, he would do it every night. And every night I would go. How are you doing this? Unbelievable. I, I man, he's, he was he was something else. He still is, but he he was just an incredible athlete. Just something like I would never even dream of doing. So hits the moon salt. Yep, that's the finish One, of the two, match. Three. And then I was like, "All right, I have to play this up." Like obviously, and I was like, I kept thinking of Kurt Angle when he got his head shaved. I was like, I got to play it up big. So they put me in the chair. They start cutting my hair. And it was like, it, I remember like they, they were very big on, hey, these buzzers and these clippers and all that need to work. And I was like, great. Okay. They need to work. Started cutting my hair. And Charles is none right there yelling at the matadors going, get his eyebrows, get his eyebrows. And I remember looking right at Charles and I go, not happening. Nope, not happening. I was like, you're not cutting my eyebrows as a rib. Like, and it was definitely coming from the truck or coming from the back of, hey, get his, you know, cut it, nab his eyebrows. And I said, not happening. Remember live on, on the air. I was just, nope, 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 nope. And I looked right at one of them and I go, do not. And I Torito goes for it. And you like actively like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pull away from I'm me. not, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to get my eyebrows shaved. So then they cut the hair. It was that it is what it is. and. It's one of those things where I was like, now let's talk about going forward. Wait, wait, wait. I have, yep. I have a question. Yeah. We have heard horror stories from over the years of 
mask versus hair or hair versus hair matches where sometimes the Clippers, you alluded to it, where they don't work as well. Yeah. These very clearly are working fine. But there is a point where Torito has a razor blade and he is just fast shaving your yes. head. Thankfully, there's shaving cream. But I was like, I have to talk to Dylan about this because it looks you yeah. don't see any blood, but it looks no, like it he, could have been I don't disastrous. Know how. I don't know how, but he was just <laughs> weed whacking at my head. <laughs> I don't know how it didn't slice me to bits, but yeah, I remember. And that was one of those things where I, I, it was, I, I don't remember seeing it. I've never seen it, but I just remember like everyone messaging me like, Hey, how did you not get cut? Unbelievable. Shit? Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. No recollection, but I remember it happening. Kept talking us down time wise and like from the from the back, uh, and saying, "Hey, you got this to go, this to go, this to go." Well, get this here, shave it more. And I was like, "Whatever." I was just going with it, but until they said the eyebrows, and then I was not dealing with. Oh. It. Well, talk to us about the aftermath now, because yeah, I know where so you're the, going, and we got to talk about it. Uh, so then obviously we go forward, and it's you know the one the the TV after I put on an afro to cover up my hair you know the, the shaving because it's the I, I said to him i said i get to the back and i remember seeing like michael hayes and going all right can i just cut it all off and he goes well no we're gonna do something with it this week and i was like okay whatever so i left it and it was brutal after the first week i knew it was a rib of them having me keep it because we did the the afro thing where they revealed the crappy haircut and then i was like all right sweet i can cut it and they were like, I remember like there's pictures of me with Landon with the crappy haircut and I would just wear bandanas around town or hats around town. But like traveling with this shitty haircut I was like, man. And then it would like started to grow in, but I would shave like I would actually like just buzz the part where it wasn't. So it looked even weirder because it was getting long. And I was just like, it was like three weeks in and I was showing up with this hair. And still doing my thing. And so much so that Michael Michael Hayes came up to me and goes, All right, that's enough. It's not even fun anymore. You're not playing it off. You can cut it. I was so exactly. I'm not gonna sell it. I knew it was a rib. I'm not gonna sell it. So I'm, I just ended up and then it was like once he said that, I went right to the see the the makeup people and said, All right, I need a uh, buzzer, I need the clippers, and I just got rid of it all. It was awesome, man. I loved it. And then, then it was like, I kind of got used to the shaved head for a bit. And I was like, okay, this isn't bad. And then quickly, I was like, oh, too much upkeep for me. I started growing it back already. But it was definitely like a, I, I knew it was a rib. I knew it was them messing with me and just having me, again, go through real life with this shitty haircut and live real life with it. Like, whatever. You talk about how... You no sold the rib. Yeah. You've done that a couple of times. You talk about it a lot on this podcast. You've mentioned it in your book, Life is Short. So am I. You can get it at dillimposta.com. Get yourself a signed copy. Get it. Um, do you feel like as your career went on, because obviously what we're going to talk about coming up is probably – I don't know. I know that you're not particularly happy about what comes after this being, you know, all the build up to WLC and to then to this match and then see where it went. But do you feel like the not selling a rib in the aspect of the hair kind of prepared you for what was to come looking back? No. Um because and the reason I say no is because I mean, shortly after that, I mean, it was after that, that uh, Drew and Jinder get released. Kind of, and that was out of nowhere. I mean, we were on TV. At that point, we were a thing, and we were on TV, uh, you know, pretty regularly, especially them. Uh, they were on TV, because I, I would, like, remember there was a couple times then where I wasn't with them for things, and I was like, okay, I guess I'm, this isn't happening, whatever. But uh, it was just... They got released, and even Heath, like, I remember Heath called me, and, man, what are we going to do? 
like and i said I, I exactly i kind of feel the same way because no one no one knew no one knew about it and no one expected it especially them two you know me and heath would be one thing not them two of the group if there's any two of the four that are that would be released it would be me and heath but man it's uh and then it was <sighs> it was dog shit it was so much just like at then they they had me dress as the cow to team with Torito, and I knew that was poking fun at my weight. And I think they had him like mount me or something, or they were gonna have him mount. Like it was a very weird thing, and I was like, I remember even going, I doing it and getting in the back and going, what the fuck am I doing? Like it was it, that was one of those moments where I truly didn't want to do it. And I didn't have those moments very much. There is a a spot in between um, in July where you come out with Heath for a match against Adam Rose. And then you get kidnapped by the Rosebuds and you get transformed into a mini Rose. Do you have any recollection of that happening? No. Nope. I didn't think so. Do you remember Adam Rose? I know. Yeah, I like that. I liked it a lot. I actually just found a picture right here of I got a bunch of my buddies uh, extra spots. Weimer was an extra. I got him as an extra. And he didn't even wrestle. Obviously, he's never wrestled in his life. But I got him an extra spot because it was in. I have, I have a picture right here of me and Landon. Must have been in Green Bay. Yeah, I was at, in, at Green Bay. Uh, Raw or SmackDown was at Green Bay. Yeah, man, I have a picture of me, Chimmel, and Landon with my crappy haircut. But it's. I remember again, I remember like I cut, I, I would just upkeep my hair for that and it would just end up being worse and worse and worse. And it's, what the fuck am I doing? But then we go to the cow thing. August 19th of main event. Yep. Okay. So that, that was, man, two months later. Uh, I would have probably had my head shaved by that, I would, I would think. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Yeah. By yeah. Then. I would have. Yeah. Cause I have a picture. Uh, yeah. I have pictures right here. Um, but they did that and that's when I started questioning what, what the hell am I doing? And is it, I remember like that was the first time I was like, is this worth it? Is it worth it to be made complete fun of at this point? Like, I, I think I deserve better than that. Um, it is what it is. Again, I look back on it now and I go, you're on TV. Who cares? Take the money, be on TV. So a lot of people who 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 aren't on TV just do it and then whatever laugh at them afterwards for paying you to do this um and then again it was like you know uh with Jinder and Drew released they need something for Heath and I and the other guy that wasn't booked at the time very much was Titus O'Neil so they put Heath with Titus and Heath being Heath Slater, Titus being a former Gator from, you know, the University of Florida or, or right? University of Florida. Yeah. Uh, they were teamed. They made Slater Gator and then they had me in a Gator costume. So much so that me in a Gator costume is actually my program photo in one of the WWE programs. Or there's a photo really? of me. As the Gator in the program. Yep. Uh, There's that. And then they asked me. One one of the week of the house shows. So I do the Gator thing. And then it was still like every house show. It would be me, Heath, and Titus. Against the Matadors and Torito. Every weekend. Every, every weekend. Well, after the Gator thing started. The first weekend. They were like, hey, you have the costume? I said, of course I do. Because assuming I would need it for TV that week. And Arn's like, they want you to wrestle in it. And I said, absolutely not. I said, I'm not wrestling and trying to do spots with this. I mean, it was literally like pajama. It was like a onesie on the bottom, like from the feet. Yeah. But then, and the gator head, which was just this puffy foam head. First night I try it. I get to the back and I go right to Arn Anderson. And I go, I cannot do that. I'm not doing that again. If this, I'm not. I'm, it's not safe for me. It's not safe for Torito. I'm not doing it. And then it, I didn't 
do it going forward. But I was like, again, I, I'm gonna appease them. I knew it wouldn't be, because it wasn't like again, it wasn't like real feet. It was like socks for feet. I remember going down the ramp. I'd be sliding all over the place. It was not it, again to wrestle in that wasn't safe, and I wanted to prove that. And I didn't have real like I didn't have I didn't have real hands. I had like mittens on the costume for the hands. Man, whatever. It is what it is. I got through it. And then I ended up just working every weekend with uh, Slater Gator against the Matadors. And it was great. I loved house shows, man. I loved doing those house shows. And it was so much fun. And just, I learned and I got to work still. I got to wrestle. I got to do things. I would wear, at like towards the end because I didn't care, I would wear just like shirts to pop myself. Like I would wear this barbershop window shirt all the time and this Oshkosh hoodie all the time just to make myself laugh. Uh, because they didn't care, so I didn't care. I think the weirdest thing is that when you're when you first dress up as the cow, yeah, they call you La Vaquita, which yep. means little cow. Then eventually it goes to La Vaca, which is just the cow. And then you're just mini gator. Like yeah. There's no there's no like naming convention behind you. You're not. just, oh, he's a gator and he's Small, so it would be mini gator. Of course. Uh, but then again, creative. you were wrestling in a Halloween costume, so. Yeah, it's, it was uh, definitely a frustrating part for me, but I loved house shows so much, I didn't care. So then, unfortunately, Slater Gator breaks up. Slater Gator breaks up. I don't even think I, then, I, I definitely wasn't there for the end of it. I was home for, by then. So there, and then I, you I'm, take some time off. Yeah, I don't have a timeline of this at all. I don't know when my shoulder surgery was. I can't March even think. of 2015. You know it. I don't. Uh, yeah, I remember just like, because I was off the road. I remember being off the road and being like, well, I started feeling some issues in my shoulder. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to get, if I'm off the road, and I'm not being used on TV. I'm just going to get this fixed. And so I did. And uh, yeah. I, and that would be kind of the, the light at the end of the tunnel moment right there. Like I did one more match. I don't even know if I appeared on television ever after the Gator thing. I truly don't. I don't know if I ever appeared on, on TV again. That might've been my last thing ever on WWE TV until like post. Damn. I have to wow, double check. I just that. thought of that. I have to double check that. But. Yeah. Guys, if you're listening, if you're an avid listener, find out. Do th- Let me know. I'll send you an 8x10, a going postal 8x10. Let me know, was me as Mini Gator the last thing I would do on Del- WWE TV before I got released? Uh. Find it out. Let us know in the comments. Let us know uh, on the, the pod page, whatever. Let us know. I mean, it's 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 crazy to think about that. That would be the end of the road. We talked about the release and all of that. Um, oh, I definitely get suspended after that. I knew that happened. Yep, we yep. talked about that. That's also available in our uh, our archive. But um, wellness policy violation. Yeah, man. This is like the weird part with me, where it's like. So remember when I didn't care about thinking about like my release and that like I didn't care and it didn't affect me like lately it's been like, oh man, that kind of sucked, <laughs> but, but it's like a uh, heartfelt moment of the pot. Here we go. I, uh, it's on the way to Disney with my son and I go, man, we all see is Saturday. He goes, I said, but two days after that is my anniversary of getting released. And I was like, and he goes, you all right? I go, yeah, I'm, I'm good. He goes, you know what? I know that whole thing kind of sucks. And it's, you know, unfortunate. But you've done a lot of cool things since then. And I was like, this is why I have an awesome kid. Like, it was one of those. And I, I, I really, I, I've been thinking about it a lot more lately. Like, how it was the end of my dream job, how it was the end of 
or what I thought would be the end of my relationship with them going forward. Obviously, I've done stuff and appearances with them and uh, still welcome, you know, to visit when they're in the area. Um, but it was just uh, thinking about it now, think about it a lot more now. And I never did before. I think I was so dead set on, God damn, look at me. I'm building a brand without him. But let's be honest. Let's be honest with ourselves. That's the biggest thing that I could do is working for the biggest company in the world. So thinking back on that, it's like, man, that it did kind of suck. I'm very happy. I love my life. I'm very, life is good. I say it all the time. And I truly, truly, truly mean it. Life is good. Um, but it's, I would be lying if I said I didn't think about it more these days for some reason. And I don't know why I do. I really don't. Cause it's not like it affects me and bums me out, but it's like, it's just on my mind more. Oh, hey. If the past, uh, year, two years and the world of wrestling and WWE have shown us anything is that you never say never. No, just because you're not there now doesn't mean in a couple of years you can't be. And who knows what other doors or opportunities may may come your way. And I never, you know me too. I never ever think that way because I'm a very negative minded person. I know, um, but think of think of all the crazy shit that has happened in the world. No, of I agree. In the past I year, who's I who's come agree. back and who's gone where? Never know. Yeah, and I'm I and if it if it were to never happen again, I truly am happy. Um. And it's not even like a man. I wish that didn't happen. It's it's literally just a, oh, that is a part that really affected my life. Um, yeah, it's a, it's one of those re- it's one of those reflections that I never had before that I have had lately now. And I don't know why I have lately now, but it just I do. The rearview mirror is much smaller than the windshield. Is that like um? I want to I want to do a. You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, Michael Scott or Wayne Gretzky, Michael right. Scott. <laughs> I like. That's, that's... I really, really like dropping the. You know what I always say because whenever I drop that in group chats, I know whenever the people reading it go, "Ugh, Dylan Post." Talk, I talked about on the CBB thing. The Cartman of the group chats. I've been called. <laughs> Come in, bust a ball. Don't be seen again. That's it. Thank you for hanging out with us yeah. this week. The social plugs at Going Postal Pod at Dylan Postal, YouTube.com slash Dylan Postal, Swaggle Auction.com, Dylan Postal.com, Pro Wrestling Tees.com slash Swaggle. Uh, Dylan has this podcast. He also has State of Affairs at where affairs him pod. at Affairs Pod on all forms of social media. Him and Joe Shoes debate a different topic every episode. It is great. Uh, also a part of that lovely family. It's myself and former Creative Pro Champion Johnny Clash, but on this podcast, he goes by Karoos. And we are the Game Marks podcast, which means we break down a different wrestling video game each and every week. Our goal is to play them all. We would love if you would come and join us at Game Marks Pod on all forms of social media. How do you media. rate them again? Play uh, forever, the, fight forever or game over? Nope, nope. Play it forever. Or game over. Future endeavor. It's not how I would rate them. It rhymes. That's why we do it. Play for, forever it, and over rhyme. Oh, no. One more time? Nope. <laughs> nope. Not doing that. Uh, yeah. Guys, for this podcast, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Make sure to rate the podcast and subscribe to the podcast wherever you choose to listen. It helps the algorithm. It helps other people come and find the podcast. And, uh, you know. We want the podcast to grow so we can continue to provide great content across all three podcasts. Next episode, guys. Oh, yeah. Fans of the pod, listeners of the pod, subscribers of the pod, supporters of the pod. We're going to be doing a very special ASS. A- Ask Swoggle any. Nope. ASA. Ask Swoggle anything episode. We did, you asked did me, it again. You asked the pod. You asked George. Whatever you want to hear about, whatever you w- have a story of, uh, ask us. George, where can they send? Where can they post? Where can they ask their questions? So for Patreon members, if you are a part of patreon.com slash pod exchange, P-O-D-X-C-H-A-N-G-E, you can submit your questions on the Patreon app. You can do it in the discords. 
Uh, there is a State of Affairs slash Going Pasta Discord. The Game Marks podcast also has our own Discord, but it's not just limited to the Patreon. All forms of social media at Dylan Postel, at Going Postal Pod. Yeah, at send it to at yeah at Going Postal Pod if you have questions on X. Uh, otherwise, Going Postal Pod at Gmail dot com. Send them there too. We will find your questions. We will find your questions at Going Postal Pod, uh, or in the Discord, or on the Patreon. We want it, guys. Here's a, here's a here's a bit of advice. A bit of advice. We don't want the what got you into wrestling. We want the creative. We want the uh, the the outlandish. We want the fun. If if it's something, or if it's something you really want to know about my career. Or about the pod, or about our, you know, George and I, and how this all thing, you know, went down, or whatever. Uh, stuff we haven't chatted about um, before is always awesome. But if you're new to the pod and you haven't heard stories, feel free to ask those as well. Uh, but hey, also, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave in the comments. Yeah, yeah, we absolutely. Leave a comment. Do that. Leave a, we love the comments on the videos. Uh, it helps our algorithm. I've been way better at interacting, and I read all the comments now and interact with them, um, especially on these, on the uh, video diaries we've been posting. Lots of lots of content. I'm getting better. I, I'm getting to decent. I'm not quite there, but I'm getting to decent. It's okay. Swag is throwing around a major pod koozie, or a major pod coaster. <sighs> Dylan! That's the whole show, man. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, signature <laughs> sign off. Thanks, guys. We'll see you on the ass episode. Ask Swoggle something. There it is. <laughs> guys, let's talk about Mad Cat Beard Care. They make my beard feel soft, silky smooth, and they can do the same for yours. A one-man show since 2019, Mad Cat uses a portion of their sales to care for local stray cats. That money covers their medical bills and finds them safe spaces and forever homes. Their products are made to order with vitamins and all natural oils that promote strong, healthy hair and moisturize your skin as well. They've got exclusive scents for myself as well as other wrestlers like my good pal Brian Myers, Mr. Kennedy, and Ring of Honor legend Delirious. Make sure to check out all of their scents along with my Swoggled scent, which has notes of lavender and sage. I absolutely love this scent. And guys, we've got an exclusive offer for listeners of Going Postal. Use promo code SWOGGLED to save yourself 15% on your orders only at madcatbeardcare.com. That is swoggled with a D on the end to save yourself 15% on your orders at madcatbeardcare.com. Guys, that's 15% with promo code swoggled. And remember, the Mad Cat makes a happy beard.